Michael Sklaw are coming to the stage, and I disappear. Thank you all very much. Slowly but surely. Well, hey guys, thank you everybody who made it. We appreciate it. If you're watching live online, we still got some seat left. Come on down here. So it's 2022. We're doing The Legend of the Christmas Spider. If y'all don't know about that, it's a great story. That's the kind of stuff we like to talk about. It dates back to the 1800s, even further. Ukraine, Poland, Germany, plenty of people have talked about this story. And it was about a mother spider that had hid in the tree. And this family didn't have much. They couldn't decorate their tree or anything. And when they woke up Christmas morning, it was spun in beautiful silver webs. And that's what we're about is finding the beauty in hidden places. So we're here for the holidays with my co-host, Mike Haltzclaw. I am so happy to look out and see faces this year. Uh, two years ago, the first time that Missy asked me to, uh, to join in this venture with her, we actually filmed it in front of her fireplace. And then last year, we were right here in this room, but you guys weren't here. It was a live stream, and we were out here performing but we were just kind of performing for the other performers. We were- It was a party, it like it is party. now with more people. But, but we didn't have a live audience and, and it's just, it's so cool to look out and see everybody here. So we're pretty excited. The Lonely Teardrops are getting ready to come on. We're gonna have Coyote Beach, Tornado Bait. We also brought some hot sauce this year for Tornado Bait so y'all can stay warm. That's $10 a bottle. Hey, and our artist, Dwight Easter, he was here last year, he's here this year. You can check his art out up on the wall. It's gonna be all over the live feed. And he is selling his amazing prints tonight. And uh, Chris Reckling is on his way for our nighttime story because that's a major part of Christmas. So what do you say, let's get the show on the road? Let's get the show going. Hey, Lonely Teardrops, give me a beat. Happy holidays, everyone. We're the Lonely Teardrops. Welcome to the Hampton History Museum. All right. Great Christmas tunes for you this year. Let's hit it.
So this song is about taking a sleigh ride, but going back in time. It's called a sleigh ride back in time. <laughs> hey Santa, I've been thinking about my wish list. I would take a teardrop trailer or a 67 baby blue Corvair. Everybody write that on your list, please. are filled with magical cheer. <laughs> All the lights are coming on now. How I wish
for you here. <laughs>
good show tonight, right? Coyote Beach is coming on, and Tornado Bay later, and story time, too. This is a great Christmas, everybody, right? <laughs> All right. Yeah, and it is nice to see everybody in person. This is good. All right. This is our last song. Let's do 10 Jingle Bells. <laughs>
much to say. But I never could find. Okay, give it up one more time for the lonely teardrops. They are a tradition here. It would not be Hampton for the holidays without the teardrops. And, and every year I have the, uh, the task of coming on after them, which is tough. But I enjoy it. Uh, so since we are talking tonight about the legend of the Christmas spider, I thought that this would be an appropriate time to uh, tell you a, a story from my own life that very, very few people know. Uh, some of my friends back home in Missouri know it, and uh, I've been living here in Hampton Roads for more than 30 years, and almost nobody out here knows that I was a teenage Spider-Man. This is a true story. Also, this is not the only item of Spider-Man apparel I am wearing tonight. <laughs> but Seamus has asked me very kindly not to show you the other part. So the year was 1979. Sony had just come out with a new gadget called the Walkman, which was completely revolutionary, and if you're under 50 years old, you've never heard of it now. Queen Elizabeth had just ascended to the British throne 26 years earlier. Michael Jackson put out his great album, Off the Wall, which turned out to be the last album that featured his real nose. That was the summer that I turned 16. And if you grow up in St. Louis, when you're 16 years old, you work at the Six Flags Over Mid-America Amusement Park because they hire a lot of 16-year-olds because they need a lot of people who will work cheap. My birthday fell in late July, which meant that by the time they hired me, all the good jobs were gone. I didn't really have a job. I worked what they called day off relief, which meant I showed up every day and they sent me wherever they were shorthanded. So I would sell candy one day and sweep up the park the next, wherever they needed somebody. I will tell you first about the second strangest day that I had that summer. That was the day that I was told I was going to spend the entire day giving demonstrations on how to make hanging baskets. I was 16 years and two weeks old. I had never put a flower in a flower pot, let alone crafted a hanging basket with my own two hands. And they told me it's no big deal. They gave me a, a mostly complete hanging basket and said before every demonstration, you just pull this up on the counter and you say, oh, well, here's one that I was just working on like anyone's going to believe that. Now you ask yourself, at the Six Flags Amusement Park, what kind of park guest is probably going to come to a hanging basket demonstration? And you're right, the answer is older women who spend their lives making hanging baskets. And I'm up there giving them this demonstration and stressing to them the importance of using sphagnum peat moss and not long fiber peat moss. Or it might have been the other way around. Honestly, I didn't know then. I don't remember it now. But I, I got up there, man. I sold the fact that I, I knew how to make a hanging basket. Kept working on that same basket all day and telling people, oh, I'm just working on this. That was the second strangest day I had at Six Flags that summer. The strangest was when I showed up and they said, you're going to the booth where people get their picture taken with Spider-Man. And I said, I have to tell you, I'm not a very good photographer. 
And they said, oh, you're not taking pictures. And I said, oh, that's good, because I already know how to work the cash register. And they said, oh, you're not working the cash register. And I kind of knew what that left. And I said, I'm not a performer. And they said, you don't have to be a performer. You put on the suit, you pose for pictures, you don't do anything that's going to embarrass Six Flags or the Daily Bugle. Now, I want you to picture two things. The first thing is, this was St. Louis in August. It was hot. It was incredibly hot. My, my memory, and I could be off by one or two degrees, my memory is that it was 175 degrees that day. <laughs> the humidity was just off the charts. Like, slap you in the face humidity. If you were trying to, if you were trying to figure out the heat index, it was like looking at a pinball machine where the numbers were just spinning. The second thing that I want you to picture is that at age 16, I looked very different than I do now. I was, I was skinny. I was bone skinny. And, uh, you know, Spider-Man, he's not the Hulk. He's not the thing. But he looked like he worked out a bit, right? Me, not so much. Uh, actually, I spent most of the day hearing people say, Spider-Man looks pretty scrawny in real life. And they said this 10 feet away from me, just as if I didn't have super hearing. But I put on the suit. And I've got to tell you about the suit. This was 1979. They didn't have breathable, breathable fabrics. They, they didn't have ventilation systems. This was, quite simply, it was a head-to-toe body stocking that zipped up the back, covered my, covered my nose and my mouth. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't hydrate. And the suit wasn't the only thing I had on. They told me I had to wear this little girdle to make sure that there were no inappropriate bulges. My insecure 16-year-old self, I was kind of flattered that they had this concern. But I was out there in my suit and my girdle, and they said, don't talk. Don't talk to anyone, because my 16-year-old voice didn't exactly project the superhero vibe, which was fine. Nobody really asked me any questions. Again, they pretty much just commented on how skinny I was. If they saw me today, they'd say, oh, Spider-Man needs to lay off the donuts. So I'm out there in this heat, in this 175 degree in the shade heat, and I'm, I'm sweating like Britney Spears taking the SATs. Finally, around lunch, they tell me, you get to take a break. And I'm so happy. I think I can get this suit off. I can get into some air conditioning. I can drink some cold water. And they said, no, no, there's no time for that. They basically told me, you can go into the break room, which is what they called the utility closet. And they said, you can unzip it enough to take the mask off. And they gave me a stale sandwich and some lukewarm water. And they said, be back out here in 20 minutes. And that was my break. My afternoon was pretty much like the morning, only hotter. And I, I walked around the park, and I waved, and I posed for pictures. And, and I'm very proud to say at no point that I lose consciousness. And at the end of the day, I, I got to finally take that suit off. And they didn't have a shower in the utility closet, but they did give me a towel. And I was able to dry off, so I did go home dry. But I kind of smelled, you know, like Britney Spears after she'd taken the SAT. And that was my day as a teenage Spider-Man.
The next day I showed up and they had me sweeping up debris around the park or something like that. And I never wore the suit again. And it's been more than 40 years and honestly I don't think about it all that much. But every now and then, life comes full circle. And uh, last year at Comic-Con, right over here at the convention center, I met the real Spider-Man. <laughs> so we chatted a bit, took a selfie, and I said to him, your suit looks like it is so much cooler than mine was in 1979. And he said, no, man, I'm sweating like Britney Spears taking the SATs. So that is the story of my one day as a superhero. And uh, now I'm going to turn the stage over to Coyote Beach. Give it up, guys.
I've tuned in as many ethereal spirits as I can, Mike. I'm ready. How about you? All right, all right. I think we're ready to go. Thank you for joining us. We're Coyote Beach. And today is the winter solstice. So we're going to celebrate some uh, pagan holidays. All right. Uh, this one is called uh, California Skies. Seamus as well for hosting this event. Thank you to the Hampton History Museum. Thank you guys for coming out. All right, we're going to have more holiday music, but uh, a little more music also to kind of bum us out as well, right? It does happen at the holidays. All right, uh, so the song is called uh, Evils.
Thank you. All right, so I, I promise that was the loudest one. We're not trying to melt your faces. I promise. All right, uh, so something a little more sexy this time. Two more for you, and um, I guess they're a little loud, so sorry about that. But the last one's a Christmas one, so you should get loud. You got reasonably scheduled break. I'm sorry about you that. know.
station after this. And then Tornado Bait. Thank you very much to Katie and the Lonely Teardrops. It's beautiful. Festive. So we're going to take a uh, brief intermission. Uh, there are adult beverages and other drinks and snacks out in the lobby. Feel free to go out and refresh. Uh, when we come back, we're going to have tornado bait. Chris Reckling is in the house. He's going to bring us home tonight from Wavy TV 10. Uh, Dwight Easter is here in the back. If you like any of the artwork that you're seeing tonight, this awesome original artwork. Talk to Dwight about it. He's back there. He's the guy with antlers on his head. So he's a reindeer, he says. I'm not sure which one. But Prancer. Check out, check out the art he's got. It's, it's very nice. It's $5. And, uh, and just... Take a little break. We'll be back in a few minutes. <laughs> 